maximum economic yield program for wheat and barley in the Mid-Atlantic region really based on two components, and that's the concept of yield building factors and yield protecting factors. So let's start with genetics. One of the things that I do in my program is conduct the statewide variety testing. Uh, so we'll look at 100, 144 uh, different potential wheat varieties this year to evaluate their performance and suitability across the state of Virginia uh, in any given year. The second piece is getting a good stand. So establishing the population in that field at planting time that we need in order to achieve those high yields at the end of the season. Uh, and then uh, also managing uh, fertility and ensuring balanced fertility. Um, our phosphorus and potassium and pH needs are addressed through soil testing and the recommendations generated by uh, the calibration sets from the lab. Uh, nitrogen and sulfur are based on yield potential. Uh, in the fall, we typically put out uh, 30 to 40 pounds of nitrogen and sulfur in a ratio of eight to 10 to one. Farmers in this part of the world um, have uh, good access to granular ammonium sulfate through the Sulfin product. The, it mixes well with our other fertilizer materials. Uh, it's readily accessible. Uh, it's highly available and, uh, and the quality is good. So we know we need 70 to 80 heads per square foot in the field at harvest to reach uh, optimum yields. And so farmers will go scout, count tillers, uh, and, uh, and based on that, we have a recommendation. A second spring application of nitrogen uh, occurs at jointing, and our program indicates the rate that would be needed at that time based on a tissue test, a sufficiency-based approach for the season. Um, in both of those applications, uh, growers in Virginia are typically applying nitrogen and, and sulfur together uh, in a ratio of eight to one to 10 to one, which is our recommendation. This time of year, fall and spring, but oftentimes uh, in early spring, is when most of our weed management occurs. Uh, weeds are competitive uh, with our crop here in Virginia. Um, and most of what we have though is relatively easy to control. So it's a matter of scouting, understanding what's in the field, uh, what products we might need, what herbicide products we might need to address that and making those applications in a timely manner. At that point in the season, uh, we're moving on uh, past jointing. We're gonna see the flag leaf soon. Uh, and when the flag leaf appears, that's when we begin to increase the threat for our foliar disease losses. So in, in, uh, for growers in the mid-Atlantic, it's mostly powdery mildew and, and leaf rust. Powdery mildew first and, and then leaf rust as that flag leaf uh, continues to develop. But most of our foliar diseases, our first line of defense is resistant varieties. So uh, choosing varieties that have good tolerance to those diseases. Uh, and then after that, of course, once they appear, uh, we use a, an IPM approach to address um, those with fungicides. So we, once we reach the threshold level, uh, that would trigger a fungicide recommendation. Once we've done all of those things, uh, it's important to avoid lodging. Uh, so we don't want the crop to fall over. That causes uh, sprouting and lots of other potential damage. Uh, and the way we avoid uh, lodging in the crop is to choose ge good genetics that stand well. Uh, it's also to maintain a balanced fertility program, including nitrogen and sulfur, uh, as well as other essential uh, nutrients so that we strengthen that stem and, and make those plants as healthy as possible. Uh, finally, we do use plant growth regulators in the Mid-Atlantic on occasion uh, when the crop is very thick or when we suspect there's a non-uniform application of nitrogen carryover or, or double up and those sorts of things.